Okay, so today I want to talk about assistance, assisting, um, you know, 10 things that I think every assistant should bring to the set every day, whether you're shooting video, whether you're shooting stills, whatever. I've, I've worked with tons of assist, hired tons of assistants all over the world uh, on jobs I'm shooting. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years as a commercial advertising photographer. And so I've worked with a ton of assistants and these 10 tips that I'm going to talk about today are super important. I think for every shoot that, is, that a good assistant brings to the set every day, which, you know, an assistant's super important uh, on the shoot. It really helps things move smoothly for me and um, helps the, sh the day go quicker and all of that stuff that's involved you know they may think they're you know not important but they're super important to have on a, a good assistant to have on a set um you know whether they're the digitech or second assistant third assistant uh these 10 tips are perfect for all of them and i think they should bring to the set every day so let's get uh zoom in there a little bit let's get into number one Okay, so the first thing, number one, is never be late. I know there's times when, you know, traffic, whatever, something happens, that, that's going to happen. But for the most part, be early, sit in your car, wait, whatever. I personally go by the theory of if you're not early, you're late. It's just something the way I am. I never want anybody waiting for me. I don't want the production waiting for me. I'm going to be there early setting up, doing whatever. That way no one's ever waiting for me. And that's kind of what I want my assistants to be there. You know, if I say nine, get there at 8.55. Okay, got to take this call. Stand by. Hello, this time. But anyway, where were we? Uh, be on time. Uh, be, at, be a few minutes early. Like I said, if you're not early, you're late. It's always good just to be there and then you know you're set to go you're not rushed everything's you know you're it's just be early it's it's a good thing and that way no one's ever waiting for you no production I've had assistance where you know they show up late and, and you know if it's it happens it happens it happens and I get that but if it's a consistent thing then I'm never gonna hire that person again and it's just all there is to it. So, and that's a pretty much a universal thing, I think, for most people. But uh, fearly. Okay, let's get on to number two. Okay, so number two, bring a great attitude to the set. Uh, come energetic, you know, happy to be there. I know sometimes the jobs are a pain in the butt, tiresome. You may run into other crew people that aren't in a good mood. But as my first assistant or assistant, just be in a good mood. The clients see it. I see it. It brings the mood of the whole set down if you're in a bad mood or not have a good attitude about having to go run to the car to grab some extra stands. And it's, you know, a ways away and it's a big hike or whatever. It's just, it is what it is. I mean, I assisted before I started my career you know, 30 years ago. So you just go do it. You get it done. And just with a good attitude and, and it, it shows. So it's just super important that, you know, and we're always trying to keep the client happy because you don't want the client to leave or get mad. So, or you don't want me to get mad. I don't really get mad that often, but uh, you know, it's, it's just something, be positive, be helpful to other people, be aware of your surroundings, just be up attitude wise. Energy is good good to have on set. So good attitude, very important. I know I have to bring it in. There's some days the shoot's not good, the client's pain in the butt or whatever, or the talent isn't working, or the talent has a bad attitude. That's a whole other issue to deal with. But as long as the assistant, good attitude, you're good to go. Your photographer will appreciate it, your video, whoever, they'll appreciate the good attitude every day and uh, makes the day go faster. Number three, pay attention. 
So there's always all kinds of things going on on the set. You got cords, you got stands, you got, I'll, in another video I'll talk about different stands and setups for different things like that on set. But just pay attention to the photographer and, you know, be proactive. If you see something that needs to be taped down, tape it down. Look around. If the client needs a water, get him a water. Just paying attention is a huge thing, you know, and if, and you just, I've had accidents on set where somebody wasn't paying attention and luckily no one's been hurt. Uh, you know, I got, long story on one thing, a huge piece of glass broke and scratched up my legs and the assistant just wasn't paying attention. Granted, it was a super long day, but paying attention of your surroundings and all the gear and other people walking around just so, and you know, if the photographer's shooting uh, like I do, you know, pretty much nothing on a tripod. I'm always handheld, I'm moving around. You know, pay attention to your photographer. If he's backing up, make sure he's not gonna run over anything, trip over anything. Just, it's a huge thing. Just pay attention. It's simple, but it's super important to pay attention. Okay, number, Four, stay off your phone. This goes back to paying attention. If you're on your phone texting or, and you can't Instagram on a lot of stuff I shoot for, say for Nike or something, it's a new product. There can't be any Instagramming of that going on, you know, or anything like posting that kind of thing. Just stay off your phone, no texts. Like I just got a text now, no text going on, um, so you're 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 ready and you're aware. Just keep the phone away when there's a break, or we have you know lunch or whatever. Do whatever you want then on your phone as long as you're not Instagram posts from the shoot or whatever. Or if you want to do something like that, ask me and I'll make sure it's clear or, or whatever. But just put the phone away till we got break time or lunch or whatever. Then feel free to text all you want after that, you know. But if you're expecting an emergency phone call or something like that, let me know, let the photographer know that you've got, you know, there's something coming in you've got to deal with during the day because we all have certain things, you know, we got to deal with and, and that kind of thing. So just let somebody know that, hey, I've got to keep my phone on just because of this or that. And that's totally cool. As long as I know, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Just, you know, no stress on that. But uh, just put it away, and again, going back, paying attention. Okay, number five. Don't be too chatty with the client. This just, if you, you don't need to be too, you don't need to go chatting up the client. I mean, if you're talking to the other assistants, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I've had in the past experience of, you know, assistants trying to tell, talk to the client about their work, their portfolio. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. That's not good. That'll get you uh, never hired again by that photographer. If you're talking about your work with his client or my client, uh, that's no good. Just stay away from that one. Don't bring it up. Just don't go there. That's a no-no. Okay, number six. If you don't know, ask just on anything. If you don't know, it, and I totally appreciate it if you say to me, hey, I don't know how that works, how this turns on, how, you know, anything about that. If, if you don't know, ask me. If you don't know how to put something together, um, you know, I'll, I'll show you once and then you'll always know. So it, it's not terrible to ask for something you don't know how to do because you know, in the beginning, I, there's things I didn't know how to do, and there's still things that people do that, you know, maybe an assistant that works, you know, a higher in Switzerland, you know, that does something a different way that I've never seen before, and I go, hey, that's a great idea, you know, and I'll pick that up and use it in my thing, and, you know, so if you don't know, ask, I'll show you how to do it, and you, and you may say, hey, I've got a better way to do it, and that, that would be awesome. You know, speed speed is always a, a thing I like to, you know, if we can do it quickly, do it safely, cut down on time, 
that's super important to me. So if you've got a better idea, way to do it, tell me, you know, but if you don't know how to do something, don't know how to use a certain piece of equipment, which is very important, um, just ask. It, it's not stupid to ask, it's smart to ask. So nothing gets broken, all of that. And you know, it helps everything, just, just to ask. All right, number seven. Put things back the way you found them. All my gear, all my case, well, you can't see them, but everything in, in the studio here has a case to travel that flies, either whether it's a case that flies or a case when we're using on location here. Um, it's packed a certain way that I like, and I like it to go back a certain way. There's a couple reasons for that. The first reason is that way we know at the end of the day that we have everything. Nothing's lost, no chargers are left, no batteries are left out, because everything has a slot and a home. And we know at the end of the day by just having the cases open, looking while we're packing up, that we have everything. All the lenses are back in there, and it, it just it put things back the way you found them. If you don't know how to wrap a cord a certain way, or put it back, or can't remember how it went back, again, going back, just ask. It doesn't hurt to ask, just ask. And that way, you know, at the end of the day, we're all packed up, good to go. Everything's found. It's everything's, everything's found. We're good, locked in, away we go. And number eight, hustle. Do a little bit of, you know, speed in your step. If the photographer asks for a piece of foam core, don't just leisurely go over there and get it. Do it with a little bit of effort into it. Get it because usually it's when I'm when I'm asking for something. I'm a very hands-on guy. I'll go grab it myself sometimes and do whatever I think it needs to be done, or go grab this, or go grab that. Um, but when I ask for something, it's usually because I'm shooting and I need it right then. I need a fill card to bounce over here. I need something to throw some shade over somebody. Um, I need another lens. You know, and it's all, everything is on these shoots, that you, bigger production shoots a lot of time. There's a lot that needs to be done in a day. And everything, you know, is on a schedule. I only have this talent for 30 minutes. So, you know, I don't have five minutes to wait for a lens to come over. So everything done with a little bit of hustle is very important to me. God, I should have wrote all these things down. Had them in my head, and now I'm forgetting. Uh, number nine, number nine. Oh, treat the gear like it's your own. So this is all pretty much all my gear. A lot of times when I'm in a different country, different state, I'll rent stuff. But a lot of times I like to bring, I bring all my own cameras, my own lenses. They always come with me, no matter what. But I'll rent strobes or, you know hot lights, LED, whatever from other places. But usually I have my gear with me, a set of my gear, and just treat it like it's your own. It's got to last. Um, it's expensive, uh, so I don't want to replace it a lot, <laughs> so I don't need it. And I like my stuff to be nice, clean, and shiny, and new looking. I don't like it to be all dented up and scratched. So treat the gear, even the rental stuff, you know, I don't want it to go back broken and then I have to pay for that and and all that kind of stuff. So treat the gear as if it was your own. Take good care of it. Again, going back to packing it the way you found it is always great. And, you know, again, just treat it with respect. Put it away nice. And that's always a good thing for me. And then, again, like it's in the right spot. I know it's packed right. It's all that. All that kind of good thing. And then number 10, watch and learn. You can learn a ton by watching the photographer work, the way he does it. I mean, if it's your aspiration to become a, a professional photographer, or videographer, what, whatever you want to do, if you're assisting, you know, maybe, maybe you just want to stay an assistant, and that's great because there's a lot of great assistants out there that I use that have been assisting for me for years, you know, 20 years maybe, and um, in different locations. And they're, they're great. And they're, they're usually ones I learn from that have worked with other people from around the country. 
and they'll teach me things going, oh yeah, this was a great, you know, I saw this and he did that and it, you know, it's just great. So I watch and learn as well, but watch and learn as you go and you'll pick up things and then the next time you assist for a guy, you'll know how to do that or you'll be able to maybe tell him he could do it. You know, you got to watch yourself on telling a photographer how to do something too because a lot of times he does it a certain way because of the way that's the way he does it, any of the way he likes it. So you kind of have to be a little, you know, you watch what you say to tell somebody, oh, you should do it this way. That's usually probably not the best way to go about it. Maybe say, hey, you know, I've seen a guy do it this way. It's a little bit quicker, I think, or, you know, what do you think about this? That's usually a good way to go instead of saying, hey, you should do it this way. That's not going to go over so well. Uh, it wouldn't go over so well with me. But, uh, you know, if you said, hey, I, you know, I've seen it done this way, what do you think? And I would say, oh, yeah, geez, that's, that's great. And then 11, bonus, bonus one. If you see something wrong on the set while it's shooting, you see something out of the place, come tell me. Don't tell the client. Don't tell the art director. Don't blurt it out. Just come tell me. Come tell the photographer. Say, hey, you know, I see, you know, we don't have a sandbag over there or, you know, something or you see the cord in the shot that no one else has seen, you know, definitely just come up to the photographer, tell him, just go, hey, you know, hey, something's wrong, you know, he sees this over here or if it's, you know, you're seeing it on the computer, it's popping up and no one else is catching it, just come up to the photographer and tell him on the side, don't splurt it out on the whole set, just kind of keep it, you know, personal if you see like hey the guy's flies open which hopefully the make the wardrobe stylist would see that but anything you know technical you see a stand leg in the shot or or something just come up and tell the photographer and or you know if you see it maybe don't if it's in there and it may be because of the way the light the reflectors working and I know it's in there and I'm not worried about it because I'm gonna I know there's a crop or something but just come tell me before you go move it and really just tell the photographer before you go move anything on the set that he hasn't told you to move and you'll be good to go. All right, those are some tips that I have uh, for assistance and it's what I like and hopefully that helps you. And again, just have, it should be a fun set. I think everybody should have a good time on the set. This is a great job to have. I love what I do. I love doing it every day. And you know, this COVID thing is, crack down on a lot of jobs that aren't happening right now but uh, the ones that still I'm still doing are it's great I love it every day and wouldn't want to do anything else all right that's it for now uh, till next time I'm out